The wine world has a problem and it's this. No, not the cork, not the capsule, not the label or even the wine itself. It's the glass bottle. Up to two thirds of all carbon emissions from wine production and distribution come from the glass bottle and transport and close to 50% are caused by the glass bottle alone. What can we, you and me do in order to change that? The answer might be surprisingly easy. Let's talk about it. The wine bottle was a glorious invention, as without it, wine would not be what it is today. Commercial glass bottle production started in the 17th century, and in the beginning, wine was often sold en vrac, with bottle owners bringing their different shaped and sized bottles directly to the winery, waiting for them to be filled straight from the barrel. Estate bottling, as in producers bottling all of their wine at the winery, only became common practice in the 20th century, and only since the EU passed regulation in the 1970s did the 0.6 75 liter bottle become the standard bottle worldwide. The great advantage of glass bottles is that they are inert, meaning that they don't react with the wine and don't allow gases to pass through. That was not the case with old alternatives such as amphoras, barrels and leather bags. To this day, the glass bottle is therefore the only vessel that allows winemakers to fill the wine at a desired maturity level and let it age in bottle for years, sometimes even decades, given that the closure doesn't fail. There are, however, issues with a wine bottle as well. First of all, it breaks. Secondly, wine bottles are not always recycled. In the biggest wine market in the world, the US, only 30 to 40% of all glass bottles are recycled and hardly any wine bottle is reused. This means that it takes a lot of energy to produce a completely new bottle. And while recycling is more energy efficient, it also uses energy for sorting and reheating. This is actually one of the reasons why it would be nice if we could go back in time to an era when people bought wine en vrac, filling their own bottle at the winery or shop. Plus, back then, Burgundy was so much cheaper. The most important issue, though, is that glass bottles are heavy. Transporting wine is hard work, as anyone knows who has carried a case of wine home. Distributing it to the point of sale, therefore, requires a lot of energy, and it can be back-breaking labor for the people loading and unloading the trucks. That's why glass production and transport contribute 68% of all CO2 emissions of a bottle of wine, two-thirds of all emissions. As glass bottles are heavy, their transport produces far more CO2 compared to alternatives like plastic bottles or cans. On top of that, the bottle shape is actually quite inefficient, leaving lots of empty space in a case compared to back in boxes or tetra packs. The alternatives are lighter, they are easier to recycle and they don't break as easily, but they have issues. First of all, they don't really look very classy. And secondly, they don't have a long shelf life. Information from The Park, one of the UK's largest bottling facilities, showed that cans, back-end boxes and plastic bottles only had a shelf life of up to 12 months. But how does filling wine into alternative packaging impact the quality? At the Master of Wine Symposium in Wiesbaden, Dr. Liz Tasch gave us the same simple Pinot Grigio filled into a glass bottle, a plastic bottle, a can and the back in box in a massive blind tasting experiment. The results from the room filled with masses of wine were mixed, but most respondents thought that the wine from the glass bottle tasted the freshest and would be the wine they would take home for dinner tonight, with the back in box and the plastic bottle not being far off. The wine from the can performed the worst, showing the strongest signs of oxidation and tasting the least fresh. This might be due to the vessel or the way the wine was prepared for filling. Wines and cans get less SO2 because the SO2 might eat away at the liner in the can, destroying the vessel. Weirdly though, most people also thought that this wine tasted the most of SO2. So if a room full of masters of wine can develop a strong preference for the wine filled in glass bottles, the average consumer is probably not going to be able to tell the difference. So don't feel bad about buying wine in bag and boxes. They actually have some advantages and you might actually be able to reduce the carbon footprint of the wine you consume. However, wine is a cultural product with a rich history and it's therefore unlikely that a significant share of wine will be bottled in anything but glass anytime soon. On top of that, when it comes to higher end wines, there isn't really an alternative available today as most of them have to be legally bottled in glass and are supposed to be aged for more than one year. This brings me to my main point, which is 
bottle weight. When it comes to preserving quality, there isn't really a difference between a heavy bottle that can weigh more than one kilogram or two pounds and a light bottle that can weigh as little as 330 grams per bottle. These light bottles look very similar and according to the contract bottlers from the park in the UK who've had lots of experience with these light bottles, they don't even break more easily. What is clear though is that the heavy bottles are far more expensive and they produce a lot more CO2 during production and transport. You might wonder why wineries use these heavy bottles and the reason is pretty simple. Vanity. Heavy bottles feel more expensive, but there's no reason to think so. Some of the best wines I've tasted, some of the most expensive wines I've tasted, actually come in lighter bottles, while some really simple and uninteresting wines often are bottled in heavy bottles. So this is my call to action. If you are a wine drinker, don't buy wine based on the weight of the bottle and tell your wine merchant that you actually prefer lighter bottles. If you are a wine merchant, then tell the wineries you work with that you would prefer them using lighter bottles as they are better for the environment, cheaper and are easier to lift and carry for your customers, your couriers and your staff. The Swedish alcohol monopoly demands from their suppliers that they use bottles lighter than 750 grams for a 750 milliliter bottle. And this should be a very easy to achieve standard in the wine industry as a whole. The SAQ, the alcohol monopoly of Quebec, chose 420 grams as the target weight of a bottle of wine, which is even better as there is no real downside to using lighter bottles. If you're a winemaker, consider using lighter weight bottles and talk about it. This could be a great marketing message. Talk to your retail regional bodies as well, asking them to reduce the weight of your standard bottles or add a lightweight alternative to the mix. Big wineries like Jackson Family Wines in the US have managed to reduce the weight of the bottles they use. And if a big operation like that can do it, most other wineries can do it too. Remember, I'm not asking for a revolution, just a sensible decision, a first step that will reduce the cost of bottles and distribution while giving you something positive to talk about and not impacting the quality of your wines. This could, however, have a massive impact on the carbon footprint of the average bottle of wine. If you agree, comment light down below. Thank you for watching and stay thirsty.